Kankakee Pandemic Food Shortage An anti-food waste campaign issued in China a while ago has sparked the debate on whether the country would already be foreseeing a worldwide food shortage to happen by the end of this year. The Clean Plate campaign has been a topic of heated discussion on social media over the past days, and lots of people are seeing it as an attempt to implement a damage control plan before things get out of hand. For that reason, in this video, we're going to investigate what's been going on in China's food supply chains in 2020, explaining what this new measure effectively means and what we can expect to see on the world's food supply chains from now on. Allegedly, targeting food bloggers who live stream their extraordinary eating experiences and may influence their audience into binge eating, President Xi Jinping has enacted this new policy together with a set of procedures. Shanghai officials are now reporting regarding business and residents that may present food wasting behavior. Amid sharp criticism that the campaign would be notably authoritarian, Jinping defended that such eating habits were shocking and distressing and that China had to maintain a sense of crisis about food security in the face of the global sanitary outbreak. The declaration raised eyebrows and made lots of people question if China could soon face food shortages due to the major complications it has had to deal with this year. Apart from the consequences induced by the health crisis, which created several disruptions in food supply chains, China has also suffered from droughts, floods, and pests, and is likely to experience poor harvests this year. In January, to prevent the spread of the virus, Chinese authorities ordered people to stay at home, farmers included. When restrictions eased in March, most farmers were allowed to come back to work. However, a short time after, extreme weather conditions across large swathes of China caused significant destruction in large crops. In early June, heavy rains were registered in the country's south, center, and east. On the other hand, the northwest and northeast suffered from droughts. Meanwhile, Chinese farmers had disclosed to a prominent newsletter that due to the invasion of pests such as locusts and fall army worms in their crops, they suspected that they would lose their harvest this year. Furthermore, in the first half of July, China National Grain and Oils Information Center published its projections for the corn supply gap in the 2020-2021 fiscal year to be 25 million metric tons, more than double the previous estimated 12 million metric tons. Later, on August 5th, the sender released a forecast that China would import 6 million metric tons of wheat in the 12 months from June 20 to May 2021, likely coming from France, Russia, Lithuania, and Kazakhstan. This is a very unusual event for China, hitting the highest amount of grain importation in the past seven years. According to the newsletter, at the end of July, while visiting northeastern Chilean province, Chinese leader Xi Jinping mandated the local government to treat grain production as a priority task. Additionally, Chinese Vice Premier Hu Chunhua demanded the governors of each province in China to ensure the sown areas of agricultural crops would not shrink and crop yield won't be reduced this year threatening governors by affirming they would be punished if they failed to uphold the promise, including with dismissals. In that sense, with such an aggressive take on the maintenance of the food supply system, the attitude of the Chinese officials signaled that China could potentially face a severe food shortage this year. The report also disclosed how each of the weather events influenced the disruption of the Chinese food supply chain, starting with floodings in 13 Chinese provinces that plant rice. Hunan, Hubei, Yanxi, 
Anhui, Jiangsu, Shishao, Xixuan, Chongqing, Guizhou, Guangdong, Guangxi, Yunnan, and Fujian were all impacted by flooding in June and July. As farmers plant rice at three different times of the year, the report explained, the early season is planted in late March and harvested in late June. The middle season is planted early May and harvested late September. The late season is planted late June and harvested in mid-October. That is to say, the flooding in June and July impacted all three seasons of rice planting. Moreover, the newsletter also interviewed local farmers and published the statement of Mr. Lee, a rice farmer from Poyan County, who said that the early rice in his province was ruined before harvest. The mid-season rice was destroyed by the floods. Now it's too late to plant the late rice. While Mr. Chen from Hunan province sadly confirmed that farmers in his area had no harvest this year and said that he and his fellow villagers were worried that they may not have enough food to eat as flooding has hit the region continually. On the other hand, in central and northern China, where farmers mainly plant wheat, the harvest only happens once a year in late May to early June. The wheat production in Hunan province provides over a quarter of China's total agricultural production, but this year droughts decimated the crops in Hunan, Inner Mongolia, Gansu, Xinjiang, Jilin, and other northern provinces. The CCTIN, a privately run Chinese grains and oil wholesale platform, analyzed the wheat production in areas of Hanan, Anhui, and Jiangsu provinces and aware that the quality of wheat this year was worse than last year's produce, also 15 to 30 percent less than previous years. However, things seem to be even worse in Inner Mongolia, Jiangsu, and Xinjiang. According to the state-run media, on June 16th, Xinhua announced that 50.7% of Inner Mongolia's land experienced heavy droughts this year, revealing that crops and wild grass were unable to grow, and local animal husbandry also suffered. In Gansu province, the dry bout led to almost no harvesting this year, as reported in local news. A farmer in Yushong City said that in 50 years of life she had never seen a drought like this year. A video that's been posted on social media in July shows a woman in Xinjiang pointing large wheat fields that have dried up, saying, you think this yellow color is harvested wheat? They all died. Our farmers have no harvest at all this year, she said. The state news also disclaimed that due to a two-month-long drought, two-thirds of the corn crops in northeastern Liaonong province have dried up. Furthermore, the newsletter also exposes that Jilin and Heilongjiang provinces reported native locust plagues in June, maintaining that a foreign locust invasion entered China's Yunnan province in the southwest from Laos and continued moving to other regions. On July 27th, the Chinese Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs organized a drill to wipe out locusts in Yunnan and estimated that more locusts would keep on entering China from Laos before late August. Farmers in southern Guangxi and Hunan provinces have also reported native locust plagues in June. And the fall army worm, which enjoys feeding on corn, was reported to have destroyed crops in Shandong, Anhui, Jiangsu, Hunan, and other provinces in July. On that note, all the cited events already indicated that a food shortage was about to happen. In addition, the state-run China Agri-Industries Holdings, the country's leading producer and supplier of processed agricultural products, divulged last month that the central government recently released 3.6 million metric tons of state reserved rice to the market, which were harvested from 2014 to 2019. The Western nation owns a national grain reserve system, intending to guarantee food security. 
yet no one knows how large is the reserve China actually possesses. Consequently, there were registers of surges in all domestic grain prices last month compared to the same time last year. According to Orient Securities and Watai Securities, soybean prices, in particular, jumped up almost 38% from 3,454 won, that's $484.85 per metric ton in August 2019, to 4,761 won, or $682.1 per metric ton in August 2020. Another sign that China food supply chains are in trouble is that the Chinese government has certainly made record purchases of U.S. agricultural goods. The U.S. Department of Agriculture said China purchased its biggest ever order of U.S. corn, 1,937 million metric tons, which will be delivered during the 2020-2021 marketing year, which began early this month. The USDA also mentioned that Chinese orders in July also broke previous records, buying hundreds of thousands of metric tons of U.S. corn, soybeans, hard red winter wheat, and hard red spring wheat. Along these lines, it is possible to notice that China is struggling with its food supply chain and has been well before the recent measures against food wasting behavior were issued. The new campaign is definitely an effort that the Chinese government is making to prevent its population to suffer from starvation, although some of the actions that were taken so far seem quite drastic and rather intrusive. For instance, food industry chiefs are pushing diners to order one or two fewer dishes than the number of people on the table while a restaurant in southern Hunan province was asking diners to weigh themselves before entering to assist them in choosing appropriate meals. Surveillance cameras were installed near food collection bins into which workers scraped their leftovers, and the people caught on camera with food waste more than three times will be publicly shamed, having their footage played on television screens across the canteens. Likewise, Food bloggers are being threatened by major streaming platforms with bans if they're seen overeating online. Similarly, as reported by an American journal, the surveillance of food waste will be expanded to entire cities, with Shanghai encouraging citizens to report each other if they saw someone eating too much or wasting food. The punishments for this offense were not specified in the announcement. The harsh government reaction is also related to many other factors, such as the spike in obesity levels, but the food waste problem by itself is staggering. Chinese state data have shown that in 2015, the country waste was enough to feed at least 30 to 50 million people, the populations of Australia and New Zealand combined. Between 2013 and 2015, it registered a waste of about 18 million tons of food each year. When China's huge population of 1.4 billion people is considered, says the American Journal, that's better than some Western nations. Per capita, China wastes about 72.4 pounds of food a year, and that's according to the Economist Intelligent Unit's 2018 Food Sustainability Index. Australia tosses out 168 pounds of food every year per capita, while the United States is ranked lowest on the index at 209 pounds of food annually. However, this is still a massive figure. Some government organs have been indicating that the worst culprit for lost produce in China is the country's growing catering industry, and the problem is worst in large cities. A local news report reminded that on the dining plate, every single grain is the result of someone's hard work. And despite the accuracy of this statement, the methods to curb food waste that are being enacted so far are quite questionable. A political analyst said that before the campaign, eating was one of the few things people can freely do under China's authoritarian system. And there's an ongoing frustration on Chinese citizens that they're facing yet another political limitation on their daily lives. Even though the problems are real, the approach seems extreme. As the director of the Institute for Public and Environmental Affairs, 
Marjan sustained. For the general public, it's better to raise their awareness and change social customs through advocacy rather than compulsory measures. In conclusion, when we consider that one of the world's largest food exporters is taking such radical actions to contain the damage of a deeply affected food supply chain, we can expect the countries that import from China to also suffer from colossal disruptions in their food supply chains. Major food shortages are coming in worldwide proportions, and if you haven't started stocking food and supplies yet, you should probably start right now. As we always advise on our channel, don't let fate come to you. We're facing the worst economic collapse ever witnessed in human history. Don't expect things to get any less apocalyptical than they are now. Get prepared!